Let's do another similar problem. Once again, we've been given a diagram with certain properties shown on it, and we've been asked to prove that the line AD is parallel to the line CB. We want to prove that this line is parallel to that line. How would we know that those two lines are parallel? Well, we have to go back to our parallel line rules. And if you remember correctly, when lines are parallel, then the alternate angles are equal. In other words, it would be very nice to prove that that angle is equal to that angle. We've got two triangles, and chances are if I can prove that that triangle is congruent to that triangle, then those angles will be the corresponding angles, and by being equal, we'll prove that the lines are parallel. In this triangle, I've got a side that corresponds to a side in the other triangle and another side that corresponds to a side in the other triangle. Two sides, side, 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 included angle side, and right angle hypotenuse side are the only three cases that we have involving two or more sides. Right angle hypotenuse side seems unlikely. I don't know much about a right angle. It's going to be one of those two. Ah. If I could show that the included angle was equal, we'd have congruent triangles. But look, I know that the, congruent tri uh, that the included angle is vertically opposite to that included angle. And earlier on, we've shown that vertically opposite angles are equal. We're ready to write up our solution. In triangle. Now let's do the order carefully. We'll go from the vertically opposite angle along the line with a single mark, O-D-A, O-D-A, and triangle O along the line with a single mark, O-C-B. We need three points. A-O is equal to O-B. A-O, D-O is equal to O-C. I try hard, by the way, to put the properties of this triangle on the left and the properties of that on the right. It makes it easier for the reader. Finally, AOD, the angle AOD is equal to the angle BOC because they are vertically opposite. I think it's useful to explain to the reader why you've decided to call those equal because on the diagram they weren't marked equal. We can now conclude that the triangle ODA is congruent to triangle OCB, and we like to tell the reader which case of congruency we used. Side, angle, side. Now remember, we proved congruency not for the sake of congruency, but so that we could make a conclusion and use that conclusion to prove this point. What's the conclusion we want to make? Therefore, Angle A, which is the third letter there, is equal to the third letter angle B. If A is equal to B, that implies that AD is parallel to CB. Reason, the alternate angles are equal. And with that, it's time for you to gather your colored cookies and pencils and do a few problems of your own. I wonder what the students have to say at this point. Okay guys, now it's time for us to head on to our next question and Valencia is going to be helping us out. How are you doing girl? I'm good and yourself? I'm very good, thank you. I'm just trying to absorb everything. <laughs> Better you than me. How are you feeling about it? It's not so easy. Hey. It isn't easy at isn't. all, hey? but the lucky thing is that we learn every day and we take it step by step. Mm -hmm. So we're cool. Yeah. Awesome stuff. 
You've got a question. Those problems involve determining missing parts and so on. Are there other kinds of problems that we can solve using the axioms? Well, let's see if Arnab can tell us. Indeed there are. And what I'd like to show you now is that we can use the congruence axioms to create new mathematical laws or rules. There I have a diagram of what should be familiar to you, an isosceles triangle. A triangle with two sides that are equal to each other. Now, the question we are asked is to prove that the angles at the base, that's these two angles, of an isosceles triangle are equal to each other. We tackled that problem last year by means of transformations. If we can, using congruence, prove that those two angles are equal to each other, then for the rest of our mathematical careers, we'll be able to assume that that is true. We won't have to justify it every time. Now, my objective is to show that those two angles are equal to each other. We're working with congruence, and I'm telling you we're going to use congruence to do so. For congruence, we need triangles two triangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a line to this diagram. I'm going to draw a line from this vertex to the base of the triangle. But I'm going to draw it in a very particular way. I'm going to draw it so that it meets the midpoint of that side. Now I want you to notice something interesting has happened. We have two triangles. We know that that side is equal to that side. We've constructed this line in such a way that we know that that side or that piece is equal to that piece. And as we've seen earlier, we have a side here that is common to both triangles. Let's label the triangles and we're away. A, B, C, and let's call that D. We can now say in triangle ABD and triangle, let's take care about those letters. We went A along the line of the double marking to the base angle and the line with the three marks on it, ABD, ACD. We need three things. AB is equal to AC. We were given that. BD is equal to DC. Because we constructed it, let's remind the reader that that's because of our construction. And finally, AD is common. This implies that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle A, C, D, and the reason, the case of congruency that we've used is side, side, side. As always, we developed the congruency or proved the congruency so that we could use what that tells us to make a conclusion. For us, this implies that angle B is equal to angle C, and therefore we've proven what we were asked to prove, that the base angles of the isosceles triangle are equal. In solving that problem, we've now proved conclusively that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are always equal. And we can use that fact to solve a range of different problems.